Okay, good morning everyone. Okay, today we all going to have uh, another lecture topic. Okay, regarding the dermatome and myotome. So there are two component here, dermatome. We we'll expand first on dermatome. And then the second one is myotome. Okay, before we discuss on the dermatome and myotome, I would like to introduce to you all regarding the spinal nerve. Okay, spinal nerve. Okay, you see here the spinal nerve. Okay, spinal nerve. Huh? Spinal nerve. Okay. There are 31 pairs of nerves originate from the spinal cord. So you can see here there are 31 pairs of the spinal nerve originated from the spinal cord. That means we have on the right side and also on the left side, right and on the left side. Okay, cervical nerve, there are eight pairs. Okay, eight. C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, and C7, C8. Eh? Eight pairs. And then thoracic nerve, so we have 12. Okay, T1 and T12. Okay, 12 pairs on right and left side. And then lumbar nerve, we have uh, five pairs. Eh? One and two, five. And sacral nerve, we have five pairs also S1 to S5 and coccygeal nerve we have one pair. Okay, so that is regarding the spinal nerve. Okay. Mm. Okay, for the spinal nerve, it has a uh, two roots. Okay. The ventral root for the motor and the dorsal root for the sensory. Okay, if you see from this picture, you can see here this is the ventral root for the motor and the dorsal root for the sensory. And then we have the dorsal root ganglion. This is the dorsal root ganglion where the cell bodies of the sensory nerve is located. Okay? The cell body of the sensory nerve is located at the dorsal root ganglion. Okay? Okay, the spinal nerve. Okay? Each spinal nerve is formed by the union of the dorsal you see it here. This is the dorsal root and the ventral root. And then we combine together to form the spinal nerve. Okay. Then the spinal nerve will divide it. Okay. And after it combined, then it, it will be divided into a ventral primary ramus and then the dorsal primary ramus. Okay. Okay. The dorsal ramus, the dorsal ramus. The dorsal ramus sensory and motor innovation. Uh, the dorsal ramus it provide uh, sensory and motor innovations uh, to the skins and muscle of the back. Okay, the dorsal ramus here it provide a sensory and motor innovation to the skins and muscle of the back. And the ventral ramus, ventral ramus here it provide a sensory and motor innovation to the ventral lateral body wall and also the limbs, okay, ventral lateral body wall and also the limb. Okay, now we're going to focus on our topic today regarding the dermatome. So what is dermatome? Okay, the definition of dermatome. A dermatome is an area of skin supplied by a single spinal nerve. Okay, area of the skin Okay, area of the skin, skin supplied by single spinal nerve. Okay, okay, you can see here the spinal nerve, area of the skin supplied by a single spinal nerve. But they are considerable overlap among the adjacent dermatome. You can see here they are overlapping. Okay, adjacent dermatome. So you can see here this is the dermatome, the area of skin that's supplied by the Single, single spinal nerve. Okay, you can see here C2, C3, C4, T2, T3, T4. Okay, for the, the, the dermatome of the upper limb, okay, the cervical or C. Cervical is C, eh? C4. Okay, C4. Okay, so the dermatome of the upper limb is, is from the C4 to thoracic 2. From C4 here to thoracic 2. Hmm? Segment okay from the cervical four segment to the thoracic two segment, okay, T2 segment from the upper limb dermatome. Okay, C4 segment, T2 segment okay, from the upper limb dermatome. Okay. The proximal dermatome, 
Okay, the proximal dermatome C4 to C6 and C4, C5, C6, right? C4, C5, C6. This is the proximal dermatome. Lie along the pre-axial or outer border of upper limb. Okay, pre-axial or outer border. Uh, oh, sorry, outer border of the upper limb. Okay, pre-axial or up, outer, uh, outer border of upper limb. The middle dermatome. Uh, C7, this is the middle dermatome, cover the middle finger. And the distal dermatome, okay, C8 to T2, okay, the distal dermatome, lie along the medial border. So this is the medial border. So this is the outer border. This is the medial border. This is the uh, middle, middle dermatome. Okay. So you can see here how the limb bud or limb, okay, the upper and lower limb bud, bud being developed. So you can see here, so the limb bud is protruding out. This is pre-axial border. This is the post-axial border. Okay, you can see how it being protruding. Okay, you can see here moving. Okay, moving out. And then, okay, like this. So that's why it, this part is belong to the pre-axial border. And this is a part belong to the post-axial border. Okay. Okay, and then the same thing also happened in the lower limb. Okay, you can see this one, this one. Hmm. So this is the entry aspect. This is the posterior aspect. Okay. So we have, uh, if you see here, this is the line. This is the ventral axial line. Okay, ventral axial line. Ventral axial line. Okay, so the important dermatome of the upper limbs, definitely, the, the, the important dermatum of upper limb is a tip of the shoulder, C4. The, uh, the thumb, okay, the thumb if you, uh, from, from here, right? From here to right here. So you can see the thumb is C6, supplied by the C6 spinal segment. Okay, C4, the tip of the shoulder. Okay, and then the middle finger, C7. And then the little finger is C8. Okay, this is the important dermatum of upper limb. Okay, now we're going to move to discuss on this part, the axial line of upper limb, axial line. Okay, we have the anterior axial line, okay, and then also the posterior axial line. Okay, this is the anterior, this is the front view, okay, this is the anterior axial line. The anterior axial line is draw from the sternal angle, from the sternal angle here, to the middle of the forearm, to the middle of the forearm, from here to here, okay. And then the posterior axial line is draw from the uh, from the spine of C7 cervical vertebra to the insertion of the deltoid muscle. Okay, this is the back view. So there is no overlap dermatome across the axial line. Okay, there is no overlap dermatome across the axial line. This is the important point that you have to know. No overlap dermatome across the axial line. For the lower limbs, uh, axial line of the lower limb. Okay, L1 to L, L1 to L3, uh, L1 to S3, sorry, L1 to S3 segment constitute the lower limb dermatome. Okay, S L1 from the L1 to S3, from L1 here, here right to S3 right. Okay, it constitute the lower limb dermatome. The anterior axial line. This is the anterior axial line. The anterior axial line. It uh, extend from the root of the penis okay, for the male. Or clitoris for the female to the back of the thigh, and from the calf to middle of the leg, to from the calf here to the middle of the leg. So this part is still the from here through to here. Okay, this is the anterior axial line. Okay, and the posterior axial line run from the Fourth lumbar intervertebral space, fourth lumbar intervertebral space with outward convexity. You can see here outward convexity, right? Cross, cross the back of the fibula head, okay? Cross the back of the back of the fibula head, okay? To the tendon edges, to the tendon edges, okay? So this is the posterior axial line, okay? Axial line of the lower limb. Okay, for the dermatum of lower limb, the L1 dermatome cover the groin. So you can see here, this is the groin. L1 supplied by the L1 dermatome. Okay. 
the front and middle aspect of the leg. Okay, the front and middle aspect of the leg. Mm -hmm. Like here, this is the leg, right? So the front and middle aspect of the leg is supplied by the L4 segment. Okay, L4 segment, front and middle aspect of the leg. And then the dorsum of the foot, the dorsum, dorsum of the foot, this is the dorsum of the foot, is covered by the L5 medially, this is the medial part, and S1 laterally. Okay, L5, follow L5, and S1. L5 is uh, medially, S1 is laterally. And then S3, the matum cover the skin of the buttock. Okay, and the S1 cover the skin of the buttock. So this is important, uh, important not to say mnemonic, but somehow is the way you 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 remember lah, memorize the things. Okay, one walks on S1. Okay, because you walk on S1, right? Sit on S3. Okay, and defecate with S4. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> The matum of the trunk. So just now we have discussed on the matum of upper and lower limb. Now we discuss on the matum of the trunk. Okay, tip of the shoulder just now is covered by the C4. Okay, tip of the shoulder covered by the C4, the matum. From the level of the standard angle, from the level of the standard angle here, uh, downward each intercostal space. Okay, from the, uh, the, from the standard angle, uh, downward each of the intercostal, intercostal, intercostal space is supplied by the corresponding thoracic spinal segment, uh, thoracic segment from T2 down, uh, onward. You can see T2, T3, T4, T5, T6, T7, T8, uh, T9, T10. Uh, okay. And the umbilicus is supplied by the T10. The umbilicus is supplied by the T10. Okay, for the dermatome of the head, so here we are focused on the head part. Okay. Okay. C1 segment does not supply the skin. Okay, please remember C1 segment does not supply skin. The spinal nerve C2, C3, and C4 supplies the skin behind and below the vertex from, uh, from the vertex tragus chin line. Okay, vertex tragus chin. Uh, tragus chin line. Okay, C2, C3 right behind here. Okay. So this can be uh, behind and below the vertex tragus chin line. This is the line here. C2, C3, okay. And C4, okay. And the trigeminal nerve, the fifth cranial nerve, okay, contribute to the cutaneous nerve, to the skin of the forehead, front of the face, and chin, okay. So you can see here the boundary, right, the demarcations, okay. And the skin of the ear is supplied by the C2 spinal nerve. Huh? It's supplied by the C2 spinal nerve, huh? the skin of the ear. And also uh, by the uh, 7 cranial nerve, 9 cranial nerve, and 10 cranial nerve, okay. Okay, for the apply anatomy part, the matum are used to test the skin sensation, okay. The matum is used to uh, test the skin sensation. In order to localize the level of lesions of the spinal nerve, okay, whenever you test the the dermatom, so you know which level is actually is uh, affected, being affected, which level of the spinal nerve is being affected, okay, and it also used to localize the level of the nerve lesions in the spinal cord, okay, and then uh, axial line are used to demarcate an adjacent dermatom, okay, and local anesthetic can be used to numb or anesthetize uh, a particular dermatome. Okay, there is the applied anatomy part. Okay, now we're going to move to discuss on the myotome, the second component of our lecture. Okay, myotome is a mass of muscle supplied by a single spinal nerve. Okay, mass of muscle supplied by a single spinal nerve. Okay, for example here, C5 is uh, for the elbow flexor. Okay, C5 for the Elbow, uh, for the elbow flexor, okay, C5, this is the C5, okay, elbow flexor, okay, C6, okay, C6, uh, C6 uh, is a uh, uh, wrist extensor, C7 is elbow extensor, okay, C8 is finger flexor, okay, L2 is, <coughs> L2 is uh, involved a hip flexion, <coughs> LT, Knee extension, L4, <coughs> L4, ankle dorsiflexion, L5, long toe extension, S1, ankle plantar flexion. Okay, S1, ankle plantar flexion. L5, 
long tail extension. Okay. Okay. For the myotome of lower limb, myotome are arranged as a group of muscle acting on the joint. Okay. For example, hip joint by the L2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay. Knee joint by the L3, 4, 5, and S1. Okay. Ankle joint by the S, L4, 5, S1, and 2. Inversion of foot by the L4 and inversion by the L5 and S1. Okay. For the shoulder joint uh, by S, uh, C5, 6, C6, 7, and 8. Elbow joint by C5, C6, 7, and 8. Wrist joint by C6 and 7. Supinations by C6 and pronation by C7 and 8. Long tendon of the finger and thumb by C7 and 8. Small intrinsic muscle of the hand by T1, uh, T1 segment. And then for the diaphragm, C4. Okay, this is important, uh, important the, uh, myotome. Okay, diaphragm is C4. The delta is C5. Bicep brachii, C5 is C6. And tricep, C7. Intrinsic muscle of the hand, T1. Anterior abdominal muscle, T7 to T12. This is important myotome uh, that you need to know. Quadricep femoris, L3. Tiberius anterior is L4. Per peroneal muscle and extensor hollicis longus, L5. Plantar flexions, S1. Small foot muscle, S2. And perineal muscle, is S3. Okay, now we come to the applied anatomy part. So we have discussed, we have discussed on the uh, the matum, uh, the myotum just now. Okay, now we're going to discuss on the applied anatomy. Okay, spinal segment controlling the joint movement are reflex center for the deep reflex objects, and this will be affected in the spinal cord lesions. Or motor neuron disease and those affecting the anterior horn cells, ventral nerve fluid, and the spinal nerve. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That's all for today's lecture. I hope you enjoy the lecture, and then you can memorize all the facts that I have give to you just now. Okay, thank you. Good. Good luck for the exams.